What's up everyone, it's Russo. I hope everyone is doing well. Please follow my Instagram at Russo Lifts just in case something happens to this YouTube channel. You can follow, message, and you can watch my daily story content on Instagram. I'll see you there. What's up everyone, it's Russo. I hope everyone is doing well. Everyone give this video a thumbs up and comment, goat Alec. I told you I'm going to deliver on this content with Alec. I just spent my last 20 minutes as IT nerd trying to get his webcam to work. But moving forward, we will be upgrading the quality even more. He bought a Blue Yeti microphone and we just got to get him a webcam. But yeah, we're just going to get started. Welcome to BluntBiohacking.exe. So this is all about just being completely blunt. Me and Alec don't sugarcoat shit and we aren't fake on here. And that's what we're going to be rolling with as the podcast name. I have a list of topics and we will just be going back and forth. So I'll let Alec, this is more like a host co-host thing. I am not directing Alec in any way. If he wants to take control of the conversation or dictate the conversation the whole time, this is not like I'm the fucking guy who's interviewing Alec. This is a host co-host thing. And yeah, you know, I'm all yeah. for Alec having his own spotlight and voice. Yeah, thank you for having me, bro. And to everybody who's watching, I uh, hope you're doing well. <laughs> so I will use that slogan. So that, that, that's ours from now on. But yeah, it's a pleasure for, uh, to be here. Uh, let's kill it. Awesome. So Touching on the Ronnie Coleman video I made, obviously me and Alec always have these baller ass phone calls off the recording off camera. Alec had a theory on how Ronnie built his physique, his behavior, et cetera, et cetera, because I made the video on discussing why Ronnie's getting big again. What does he really yeah. have to prove? He had all those surgeries, et cetera, et cetera. And you said that you were linking his extreme progress despite all his injuries to extreme painkiller abuse from your yeah. watching of the documentary. Yeah, I saw that documentary uh, actually three times now. And every time that part comes up where he basically just slams oxycodone uh, and they, he, he, I'm quoting, he used like 150 milligrams per day, which is, which is an insane amount. Like it's when I had surgery, I used, uh 40 milligrams once mm -hmm. i as fuck like it was it was so intense and the surgeon asked me whether like i'm using drugs because they had to use three times the normal amount of anesthesia to put me down so and and this was like i think i used it for for a day and a half like i split my dose uh for uh, like f less than 48 hours so i cannot even imagine what it does at that dose I think um, I got 40 milligrams for my wisdom teeth surgery. And when I was driving to class the next day, my reaction time was like three seconds delayed. And that was just like the same dosage you got. So I can't even imagine blasting that. Yeah, it's not only that, though. Like the feeling I had from it, like it felt like Adderall and like laced with cocaine and, uh, and MDMA. I was like super happy, concentrated. My cognition was... Uh, I thought it's improved, but like I was talking gibberish, um, but I, I was not aware of it. And my behavior was completely uh, whacked, but uh, I was not able to tell until I got off. So when I see one videos of him, uh, when he's doing those infamous lifts, so um, he really resembles somebody uh, that's, you know, high as fuck. So there was this video where he's doing a hex squat with like an absurd amount of weight. And he's like dancing and grooving and vibing. And, you know, like it kind of looked off and I just put things together as I watched the documentary. You know, I, I also um, remembered uh, an interview with Flex Wheeler where he discussed um, that one time uh, he and the boys and Ronnie Coleman went to a club uh, and they, they were drinking vodka. They tried to get him drunk and that he just slammed a whole bottle of vodka and he was not even touched by it and unless you're a chronic alcoholic uh which i'm sure he wasn't no, um the nation that you can tolerate that amount of alcohol without being you know faced by it 
it's either if you use cocaine or or or, or oxys because I also tested this uh, my theory. Um, I took I took some again and I was drinking alcohol and I never drink alcohol. Um, my tolerance is absolutely shit. Like uh, I cannot even handle uh, two glasses of wine. And back then, I could drink a few like uh, glasses of whiskey and I also mix it with vodka. Uh, and I was not phased at all. Like it was, it just went down and it was, it was like water. Mm-hmm. So, you know, that's why I thought, damn, you know, the things, things add up, you know, as I, as I'm uh, thinking about this in my mind. Um, and also we know from back in the day, uh, new Bane was also used, which right. is a pain. Out of pros from back in the day, admit to, to utilizing painkillers for training. So I would not be surprised. And also another thing is how do you go to that dose? Like you don't just start off at 150 milligrams, like you, you will die. So uh, there had to be a process of tapering up and maintenance. So I think when they prescribed him that dose for his surgery, uh, I'm pretty sure he was already utilizing uh, at some capacity. He was, he was not you know, a newbie to that drug. So that, that, that explains a lot. And especially you think the... that attributes to why he got to the freaky size he could get to is because like he had no idea the damage he was doing to his bones and shit as he was doing those movements. Yeah, ex- exactly. Like he was, uh, he actually said it himself when he was, uh, uh, when he injured his spine at first, um, he said that he felt something, you know, it's just light pop or something like that. Uh, and then he proceeded training and then he went to his car to go to his job. And then like, he could not move his legs. And that's when he decided to go to the hospital. And they told him that he smashed, you know, um, uh, he smashed something in his back, whether um, I can remember what that was, but like that should hurt. Like that should really yeah. like that. Mm-hmm. Oh. Uh, so I've had back, have had back injuries from squatting, you know, lifting them properly. So in order for you to not feel it, finish your training and then just go drive to work, you know, all of these things, you know, are kind of, uh, kind of, you know, leading to, to my point. I mean, I don't want to, you know, get sued by him and I'm not saying he's, you know, uh, for sure he was doing this. I'm just speculating based on, uh, what I see, what I've saw in the documentary, and just going back, you know, in my mind and thinking of certain uh, certain situations where I can just, you know, put things together and it makes sense. Would you segue into like when we look at Dexter Jackson as his career went on, he switched to like more machine work and you saw the longevity of his career. Do you think if Ronnie followed in that footsteps, he'd be way better off than he is today? Because that was kind of the conclusion I drew from my video. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's that's not something that's worth debating. Um, I mean, we see this uh, in real life with other pros as well, like Phil Heath, for example. You know, he was never the guy that, you know, did a lot of free weight movements. Like he, his training was like m- more focused on machines and, you know, pumping and F- FST7 uh, or whatever was the Henny Rambot's uh, training program. Yeah, FST7, so, like blood flow yeah. training. Yeah, and I think so if you look at the clients of, of, of Hany, uh, they're all, they have side injections, like like Jeremy Bondias, his delts, his triceps were, you know, whacked out of his mind. Um, what what kind his... of side injections do you think they're using? Um, I think it's water-based because it's not, it's not fucking with their definition much. Like Jeremy for sure has central or, or gear, but like Phil had all the striations uh, you can imagine, like uh, in his you know, arms and delts. So, uh, I would I would assume it's something water based, like hyaluronic acid or mm-hmm. resin, uh, that that causes like localized inflammatory response, and it, it it inflates your muscles, but does not have something that would you know stick under the skin and cause like lumpy uh, a lumpy look to it. Uh, and also, when I think of the training method, the FST uh, seven, right, mm-hmm. like pumping and it's like just moving blood and whatnot and that goes well with side injection right so if you were to something in your pecs for example or your biceps you want to go and then you know kill yourself get as much uh, blood moving in that area as possible in order to distribute 
uh, whatever you've injected, um, you know, all the way throughout the muscle. And also, like if it's hyaluronic acid, it, it makes sense. Um, it also pulls like uh, 5,000 times its molecular weight in water. So yes. it's like a, it, it gives like that spongy, um, you know, inflated look, but doesn't blur definition. Um, Essiclin worked similarly to that. Uh, Flex Wheeler used that as well. And he was the king, uh, the sultan of symmetry. So that's what I assume. Um, but so for all yeah. the natties watching that drink the pre-workout after, that's basically just to pump the drugs into the muscle and uh, yeah. as well as pump the site enhancement. You know, it bothers me when I see like people like you should only be training like that, in my opinion, if you're super enhanced. Otherwise, I, I really sure. don't feel like that's the optimal way to train. Even if you're enhanced, like you don't you don't defy the fundamentals of muscle building so you still need some form of progression progressively overloading mm -hmm. um you know you still need to follow to be in a caloric surplus or at maintenance at the very least um i get kind of triggered when i see uh the whole premise of uh, main gaining things like that you know yeah, let's touch on that because you said has made any sort because oh, okay. so let's go into you you are bulked up right now at 275 pounds and yeah. the amount of tissue you probably built is ridiculous once you reveal it. I did a big yeah. bulk to 260 pounds. Like, do you yeah. think if we main gained, we would Never. be anywhere near where we currently are at this no. stage? No, no. Here's the thing, though. Um, I don't want to shit on the guy. I mean, he made the whole term, so I have to you know, mention him, the uh, Greg. Uh, I mean, from a business standpoint, from a marketing standpoint, what he did is like he sells multiple cookbooks, right? That are based around people chronically starving themselves. And he has like great recipes. Um, I've seen the books. Um, he has great low calorie um, uh, foods basically uh, implemented. And they are great for people that are, you know, like just chronically um, in a deficit. Um, and he wants to sell more of them, obviously. And so he says, okay, this is marketed towards people that are dieting, but you should also not bulk. So now he in like increases his reach basically of people that he can sell it yeah. to. And thereby he and therefore he says, Well, you don't need to bulk in order to gain muscle. You can just sit and uh, at maintenance or even in a deficit, which makes zero sense whatsoever. Zero sense. Uh, and, and the, the, you know, I don't give a shit, but the, the funny thing is that I see people that are commenting on, on pros, like, for example, uh, Ian Valer's page, you know, he posts about bulking and people are like, you should be maintaining this and that. I'm like, what the fuck? No, no, no one's serious, uh, seriously, you know, should believe this. You know, there's no pro in existence, in existence that is not bulking. And I see Greg, for example, taking uh, Chris Bumstead. He used to do that. He took him as an example because he was staying relatively uh, close around his uh, weight. But that's because now he's they somehow weighted himself, uh, not weighted, uh, heighted himself at uh, one foot, you know, longer than he is than he was. He prior. probably goes on an inversion table forever before he gets measured, so he gets that extra stage weight, and then he shrinks. Yeah, exactly. But now he's bulking. So, like, he used yeah, to wasn't sit around like 270 to come down yeah. and win the Olympia. That ain't main gaining. He should have stayed around 240, 250. Yeah, but ever since this happened, he doesn't, he, he hasn't mentioned that at all. Like, when, when he was fitting the narrative of, listen, Mr. Mr. Olympia, Chris Bumstead is not, you know, bulking, therefore you shouldn't as well. Then he was mentioned. Now, when he has a you know more leeway for growth, then suddenly it's, let's just forget about him, you know, and just milking in other directions, you know, which 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 is sad to be honest with you, because uh, I I hate when people start off legitimate, you know, with with these are the ideals and 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 you know good character, and they just fall apart uh, after as they a get while. more famous. The money and yeah. fame bring the real person out of them. That's exactly what I mean, happens. I mean, they. I mean, I don't know whether it's, I think it just brings out the greed, you know. And I, it doesn't matter whether you make three millions or two point five mil. If you stay true to yourself and you don't sell out, 
Um, wh- you why does never it matter? lose your core following? In my opinion, core following that, is everything. Yeah, and like, who cares if you can cur- like collect more garbage clout if you expand yourself? Your core yeah, following is what got you there, and you can see that Greg's core following all has turned on him by now. That's the thing, though. It's not only with him. Um, the core followers are the ones that they make the sales. Like they would, they would buy things off of you just because they like you, you mm-hmm. know, in order to support you. So they will have your back if your social media gets taken down, or you have any problems, or somebody beefs with you. So you know, those are the guys that actually penalize you when you're when 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 you deserve it. So they're watching. They're watching. So. You know, over time, you know, you know, everything will play out as it should. You know, it's just sad that I see it uh, quite often with uh, a lot of people. You know, they just reach a certain point. And the problem with uh, this day and age is that people th- being, you know, changing your personality and, you know, becoming a, a sellout uh, pays off. Because now people make ridiculous amount of money where it reach a point where it doesn't even matter. So it doesn't matter. You know, they get fuck you money that, you know, it's worthwhile in their opinion to sacrifice uh, integrity over. Well, they sell out nowadays, in my opinion, to get the fuck you clout. It doesn't matter how you get the clout as long as you get it. And then it's just a giant snowball that really doesn't stop rolling once you get that ridiculous amount. But segueing back into Greg's main gaining, I think it comes down to Greg won't look outside of like what he personally did. Because when you look at his frame, like it's really easy to fill out that frame. Whereas when you saw when he coached Brandon Harding and why Brandon probably left is he probably wasn't putting on the amount of size in the offseason Brandon thought he should and use less drugs than he probably thought he should. And yeah. that's just like kind of where that connection, like you saw that the main gaining shit didn't work with a taller, lankier frame, which it is why it pisses me off when you see like an ectomorph, which ectomorph, mesomorph, that shit like could be real or not. But you see yeah. a guy who has hard time putting on size and now he's even more afraid to bulk now and thinks like he's going to main gain. He's going to turn 27. He's never going to build the physique. I agree with you. I agree with you. Um, and we see it, like we see it in practice. So it's not surprising. Uh, what, what is surprising to me that uh, people tend to have short memories sometimes, you know, and they just let things slide. Um, I mean, I'm not saying crucify uh, somebody or anything like that. You know, it's not that serious. But uh, the damage is done uh, when naturals, you know, when and, and kid, young kids, you know, in the gym, they're just wasting time thinking, you know, that's the way to go about it. And they just don't progress for shit. See, uh, over, me know? and so, you, we were smart and knew that, like, it didn't matter until we had the amount of mass to where we cut and looked big. Nowadays, exactly. with social media, like, they want to stay shredded all the time to keep their social media numbers up. If you're not shredded, you don't get any attention on social media. They hear Greg me- Doucette. Yeah, let me interrupt. That's true if you have nothing else to offer apart from apps. Like if you're informative, you know, I like I liked something that Steve said on, on, on uh, his podcast. Um, that, Steve, for anyone who doesn't know who Steve is. Yeah, the topic was like hair loss. And he said that he doesn't care about his hair because like he, his wife, uh, you know, um, loves him and his fan base should not, you know, see him as, you know, judge him based on his looks rather than based on his information. So that's true confidence. And that's somebody that really, you know, is worth something. So you can't cheat on that. Um, and I think that's the right outlook and approach people should have. But the thing is, most often that nobody has to offer shit uh, uh, apart from well, yeah. just being- you're, you're thinking like I'm thinking of a younger kid like me and you both had aspirations to be a mastermind. Me and you both shove as much information in our heads as possible and think of ourselves as stupid, like the entire time building, you know, the intelligence. Most guys yeah. won't go down that road because that road's a very hard road to go down. And you see you see vigorous Steve as the mastermind who went down that road forever. 
obviously he's going to be put on the pedestal for just the brain, but most guys will never even go that route. I mean, sure, but like the other alternative route that is, you know, the what's cool right now, it's so milked to oblivion, you know, it's really when I was in Germany, more. well, and it's saw a lot of the influencers in real life. I had this word, like, what the fuck are influencers, whatever. Um, mm, like 80% of them looked like they don't even lift. Uh, I was surprised, you know, some physique competitors were like super insane, like uh, Andrew Diu, um, some black dude, physique guy, like they were like dwarfing, you know, even bodybuilders. Um, and a lot of like, for example, Tabby Castro, like mm-hmm. in lot in I have a picture with him from even back then in 2019. Like he was like, like, how is this dude, you know, the same person from social media? Mm -hmm. I don't know. You know, and they have videos as well. What are they doing? Is it like, I mean, I don't get it. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty retarded when it comes to technology. So I don't know the editing. So it's like, it's like, so with these pictures, I would take what's called a raw picture of you in the gym which is just the raw data, the raw data. And then I would go into the editor and I would add the perfect lighting to where you pop the most. And I would enhance the photo the most of the angle. And then Mm -hmm. it wouldn't be like what you look like in real life at all. And with the videos, a 55 millimeter to an 85 millimeter lens makes you look so much larger than the natural eye sees so if i wanted to make you look super big i would shoot you on an 85 millimeter and you would look gigantic and that's what these influencers do yeah you know that that's the thing because they look bigger Mm -hmm. and hence i was like i'm baffled by it and another thing that i also noticed and why it made me you know not want to compete probably ever um I saw this dude, uh, Wesley Visters, um, that on Instagram at that time uh, wasn't really, you know, amazing. He had, he looked like he had like thinner legs, you know, not super impressive. Like he had, you know, the Arnold type of physique, but you know, it was not mind blowing to like Chris Bumstead's level or some of the, you know, classic uh, physique guys. When I saw him in real life, he was like, like he was, his back was twice my my back in width. He was like a monster. I was like, holy shit, this dude is so in- impressive. I was like shocked. Uh, and I saw Brian, for example, that's, you know, a shorter, you know, more blocky. He, he looked very blocky in real life. Uh, maybe he was bulking, but still. So that year, um, Wesley was didn't even place. So I was like, if you're tall, you're fucked. Uh, it doesn't make sense. There's no class where you can do shit. So, you know. How tall is Wesley? I don't know, bro. Like, uh, I'm 6'1", and the dude was, like, way taller than me. So, I'll have to look up his height. I'll have my editor, when I do these in clips, pull up his height. Yeah, you, you really are screwed if you are above 6'2". You shouldn't even think, in my opinion, yeah. about competing. The amount of mass you need is ridiculous to compete against a short guy. You I know think you're at the very top of the height range to compete at 6'1". Bro, honestly, I'd rather, like, it'd be smarter for me to even do physique. Because if you look at Olympian physique guys, they're jacked out of their mind. Like, they're they're super full, super you know, hard, super muscular. Um, some of them are even bigger than the classic physique guys. Mm-hmm. Just based on, uh, They don't have a weight cap. So, you know, that's interesting. Um, like I have a very wide back and, you know, popping delt. So like, I, I think I could, you know, fit the criteria. My waist is not the smallest, but, you know, with work, um, you don't know. But still, I have a long way to go. Like I need to put, you know, a lot more muscle mass uh, in order to, you know, be even worth it. Um, but but I'll cut this summer just to see, you know, where I'm at, you know, relatively uh, to have like a, an estimation. I say you're not leaning towards classic. What are your reasonings? <clears throat> My reasoning is that I don't have that crazy classic frame. Like those guys, they have like super thin waist. They have like gigantic, um, gigantic biceps. You know, as a taller guy, my arms and, and legs are more, uh, you know, uh, uh, lanky, so to speak. So in order to fill out, 
I need to be like, I don't know, like 245 to 50 on stage at least um, in order to have that look, you know, even remotely close to some of those guys. But if you wanted to compete, you'd have to compete locally at the smaller weight cap and then turn pro to get the bigger weight cap. So here I would never compete. Here is a fucking circus show. Uh, nobody here that competes looks look like they, they, they even live to be honest with you. They're, uh, you know, the, the average Alec Macedonia. is from Macedonia for everyone listening. Yeah, nobody or yeah, nobody, nobody probably has even heard of it. Um, but uh, we don't even know how to call ourselves ourselves. You know, we change our name to North Macedonia and we're all confused about that shit. Something like liberals that are confused about their gender. So, you know, that should give you <laughs> we are um and as far as the bodybuilding scene here um you know people just suck um you know the average bodybuilder is like 78 to like 84 kilos like 10 percent body fat um so it's just a circus show and i'm prepping a few guys for uh the national show here in two months so um you know you'll see some pictures from them they, they will be the only ones that actually look like you know, they've tried, obviously, because I'm supervising them. But other than that, you know, it's very sad. So I don't even care. Well, once this audience blows your cloud up, we're going to get you away into the States so you can do a show. I really think that you would turn pro easily. And then it would be up to you if you thought, you know, you wanted to put on that. extra. Because like my one friend turn pro and then it's like, OK, now it's like two year off season minimum to try and get to the ifbb weight cap so like it's yeah. like even with me there's no point for me to even put on a shit ton more size it's just no. to get to that weight cap to get pro and then it's like oh man i have so much more muscle to put on now right yeah i wouldn't even bother like if you can get your pro card to just like it's like an a fuck you argument um you know which a lot of people don't even know what ifbb is or give a shit but you know it's still something that you know may raise your dopamine chasing you know that goal um you're in the industry so why not and you know legitimately you can do it and uh, you don't have like the best frame but like you have the muscle mass and you put on some serious muscle um and you will out condition you know probably everyone so you know you, you can play the guards you're dealt with and 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 make a lot of it so i'm not worried about that um I'm just like, for example, I, I would be more worried about the health aspects, um, mm. which I'll talk about. Um, I didn't uh, an MRI in my heart. Um, uh, so interesting, though, I did like from 2019 uh, onwards up until now, um, I switched from SARMs um, to steroids, right, in order to gain some muscle mass. Um, and I've never done uh, anything apart from AKG and uh, echocardiogram, which were, you know, were normal. And for people uh, in the States, like Alec can just go and request these. If I want to get an EKG done, it's right. like a six month argument to even attempt to get an EKG done. Just and what are the What's up? Uh, the prices, like how, how are they priced in the US like for that service? I have no idea. It's like basically you would have to get it covered under insurance and have mm -hmm. the doctor like have a reason to give you it. I couldn't just go in and be like, yo, I'm abusing steroids. I want to check if my heart's a normal size. Basically, unless I had some super underlying condition, I would so never get an EKG, like actually get it. What about what about privately, though? I don't know. I don't even know if I could privately get one done. I'm sure someone in the comments will link me a way to get it privately yeah, done, yeah. but I don't know. I, I would want to see your... Uh, you, you have I would to want to make the content too. I'm not against it. I just... I don't know how to get one independently done. Well, I mean, we can use my references because um, I have... Over the years, I have, I've done like every six months both AKG and echocardiograms, and also I have... MRI from 2019 and now so that's like three years of steroid use um so that's you know something that we can utilize for content um so and also just to you know touch upon the results uh, I was kind of shocked because um 
initially I, I did that out of curiosity to see my heart stats. You know, I saw um, just recently uh, George Peterson, uh, Peterson's death report, right? Uh, he had like enlarged heart and he died from um, hypertensive crisis. Um, so that's like a severe high blood pressure that caused an arrhythmia and, you know, he died. And that was um, deemed natural death at 37, I think, which is, you know, scary. Um, so, you know, I, I did that and I expected to see like a great deal of uh, left ventricular uh, hypertrophy. Mm -hmm. And, you know, an, an increasement of the weight of the heart because all of the death reports I saw, I saw, you know, from Dallas to Rich to, you know, and other uh, reports I've seen, everybody had an increase in, in weight of the heart. And, uh, and, and also uh, structurally, the heart was, you know, uh, was not normal. It was pathological. Um, so what happened was um, I, I had like minor left ventricular um, uh, hypertrophy, which um, fit the narrative of an athletic heart. So it was not pathological. It was within, you know, um, striking distance of, you know, other athletes like endurance runners, you know, um, soccer players and whatever. Like I, I had dimensional wise, it was slightly uh, above the norm, but it was, it was not like bad. Um, and I also blame Nandrolone for this a lot, uh, you know, from, for the, um, for the growth that, it, that happened. Cause you know, there are a lot of studies showcasing uh, it's, you know, cardiotoxicity. Uh, especially compared to uh, testosterone, there was a study where it said that it, like it was eleven times more cardiotoxic, and I can see that totally happening, especially through the blood pressure uh, increase mm -hmm. that it. So, like over activation of the raw system of the renin angiotensin aldosterone system would, uh, by definition, increase um, blood pressure, heart rate, and would cause cardiac uh, cardiac remodeling. Um, the shocking thing, though, was um, I was utilizing uh, minoxidil for hair loss uh, prevention. So what I, what I saw, I had right-sided peri, uh, pericardial effusion, which is a fancy name for uh, water tension around the heart mm -hmm. on the right side, which is typical for vasodilators such as minoxidil um, uh, and, and uh, what was the other one? Uh, hydrolyzing. Um, so, uh, that was very scary, um, cause it, what it did not show up on the, uh, echocardiogram or the AKG. So they didn't give me any therapy. You know, I'm on beta blockers, um, just through an, an anti-inflammatory medication, um, just to, you know, relieve, uh, the, the heart from, you know, from systemic inflammation, uh, inhibiting COX-2 and COX-1. Um, and with time it will pass. I obviously stopped the minoxidil, uh, but it was like very, you know, uh, eye opening. like the amount of damage, you know, this can cause like arguably worse damage than steroids, uh, in my situation. And, you know, people are using it. It's over the counter. Um, and it can cause a lot of problems. And they're not just using it. They're abusing it. Right. Because the hair is like, you know, yeah. for a man. So that, that's why when I shave my head. I wanted to see like whether I can just, you know, how would I look, whether I can pull it off. Cause you know, it's, it's, it's a source of insecurities. Um, and quite frankly, I don't give a shit. Um, I think right you now. look like the Macedonian mob boss. You are Alec. I don't <laughs> think it really, it fits your character. Perfect. But the flow is nice as well. I don't really yeah. see. I th I like both looks. It's like Nico Bellis right. from GTA four. Yeah, I went from I went from like uh, like a boy band singer with with muscles to like a thug, but uh, whatever. Um, and also going back to this drug, I want to also note, uh, you know, the pathway in which you know it can really fuck with people, because um, it's useful information because a lot of the viewers are using it. So uh, based on studies, um, three to five percent of you know the, the net amount of topically applied. Uh, uh, milligrams get systemically absorbed on average. So uh, the recommended dose is 100 milligrams um, uh, split twice a day. So one milliliter, which is 50 mix in the morning at night. So that's a hundred mix. Three to 5% would be basically three to five mix, um, which is enough to cause 
to increase uh, renin and aldosterone mm-hmm. uh, so as water retention and edema. Uh, it activates the baroreflex, so it, it, it basically causes sympathetic nervous system activation uh, through uh, the alpha uh, alpha one adrenergic signaling uh, postsynaptically, so that just causes a reflex tachycardia and anxiety. Um, you know, people have reported having, you know, elevated heart rate from it, like that's from sympathetic uh, uh, activity. And pair, paired with steroids, because steroids um, impact the heart on the and left side. And that's a common pairing, too. Everyone yeah, yeah. using steroids is also dumping monoxidil yeah. on top. Yeah, so you're causing uh, bilateral damage, left-sided through androgens, uh, right-sided through, you know, the nitrates, so through the monoxidil. So essentially, you're just attacking the heart from both ends. And also steroids, since they're, you know, they cause uh, hypertrophy of, you know, um, every muscle in the right, heart. The bigger is, you get, the bigger yeah, the heart's going to compensate and get bigger yeah. for it. And if you're increasing your heart rate, you know, um, that's essentially, you know, causing further adding to a lot, to hypertrophy. So that combination can be really detrimental. Um, and, you know, people really do not talk about it. Um, and it's interesting because in studies, uh, as far as these side effects uh, present themselves, they don't show up at the beginning. So usually they, they show up like within like months or even years sometimes of utilizing it. And, you know, people may wonder, like, what's going on? Like, I didn't change anything. How is this happening? You know, and, and you know, it can just happen like that. So kind of kind of something that's worthwhile. Why do, you, why do you think that's hidden? Because I actually read into Minoxidil and knew about those side effects. But when you go around on the Internet or, like, someone like, oh, just do Rogaine, do Minoxidil, like, that's it. Like, there's no side effects. Like, why do you think more people haven't come forward? Is it because like you have the ability to get the scans done and actually see what's going on? Well, that's one argument. Um, another argument is that they actually do that, but they get just crucified through, you know, from other people that are, you know, so, you know, um, paranoid about the whole process. And they're like, they're like a cult. So if you talk shit about, you know, whatever is helping them, um they just crucify you and we see also this in the bodybuilding scene Mm -hmm. you know if you talk shit about i don't know for example um sarms you know people that are utilizing sarms will you know attack you uh we see that with uh turkestra now um and you know any compound people are you know becoming religious in regards to their yeah it's it's becoming very tribal across all social media just creating tribes yeah, exactly. And that's that's really weird though, but but it does happen. I think it just you know, people are so lonely and they just look up for things to connect by. Um, and they just, you know, just do weird shit, you know, just to be relevant and hurt, you know, because when they when they attack like that, they're hurt. So they, they find themselves um you know relevant, so to speak. Um, and that's a problem. But but yeah, uh, these things are very real. Um, and quite common, um, honestly, you know, based on just the studies. So, you know, that's why we're here. We'll, you know, bring light uh, to, you know, everything that we find out. So, yeah. Speaking of bringing light, you mentioned Turk. That's the hot topic. I'll go out on a limb for you guys and say I've used like $500 plus retail of Turk in under two weeks. All I really noted was increased muscle density, slightly better recovery. If you were to mimic my cycle, again, two weeks would be over $500. Absolutely not worth it. For a lifetime natural, you might find benefit. But Alec, how do you see, you know, you see how the fitness industry is marketing this as the new next great thing. Where do you draw the line for you? Well, I draw the I draw the line first of all when I see very questionable research. Like for example, there were studies on my where uh, Turkestan just shit on Dibol, for example, as far as efficacy goes. Yeah, that study is the most hyped. What created the marketing buzz, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Yeah, but it's in mice though. Like just to give you a reference, 
in mice, like peppermint and job oil outperform minoxidil for hairy growth. They, like we've done really fucked up shit in mice. They have like completely, um, uh, z- they have nothing to do with real life, you know, uh, applications on humans. So it's really, it's really weird. And I, when I see people making those claims based on, you know, studies like that, like for example, the Karin study for cancer that induced can- cancer in rats, you know, when I see that, I just, you know, just tells me that it's just a um, marketing, you know, gimmick. And um, so, uh, I mean, I've never tried it, so I, I don't want to really shit on it that much. But, you know, you said right now you tried it, at, you know, extreme high doses. And I've talked with people that are enhanced that they have utilized it and, you know, didn't see shit. So, you know, and also when I see the type of, you know, individual that are, you know, making those claims and pushing it, like those people are not legitimate in other aspects as well. So their credibility is shit uh, in my eyes. Uh, so, you know, those are red flags for me. Uh, and it just, you know, don't even bother with that. It c- kind of gets annoying when people are, you know, just, again, they're, you know, cultish about things. Um, but, you know, over time, I just, you know, try to ignore the shit and, and just do my research on, you know, other things that will probably be, probably be more relevant and more efficacious um um down the road it's just like like you said people have short memories you know i remember when laxogenin came out that was the turkisteron of that era and if you right. took a bunch of laxogenin you notice like this much wasting a shit ton of money on it i think steron tra- comes along same thing yeah i think you tried and the pricings are kind of absurd so like i don't know like i, I think it's like spend... 70 dollars for a bottle and i would suggest at least like six to seven bottles to actually milk some sort of results out of it right. like to be able to give you yourself enough time to do something with it exactly you know it's you know if we if we make it happen um you know based on the message tony sent me you know if he's here i'd want i'd like to ask him because you know i also see I've seen that he, you know, he kind of pushes the uh, Drukesson run as well. Um, so, like, why would you utilize that? Everyone go attack Tony on social media and tell him to get on bluntbiohacking.exe. You guys got the command now. Go execute. This is the execution file. Yeah, it's set in stone right now. <laughs> mm-hmm. So, like, if you're pioneering things, uh, the whole goal is to to, you know, based on risk reward ratio, find things that are, you know, more, um, you know, efficacious, uh, efficacious and, you know, it's just the next we, hot I, thing to sell. Yeah. I think, I think, I mean, it's kind of obvious in that regard, but still like, again, going back to the question of integrity, you know, why would you, you know, smear your, you know, your true exactly. belief. You see me, over- I have all the ploy in the world to sell Turk. And like, yeah. I obviously just throw the link up, but you see all my information about it and it is what it is. You know, I'm not here yeah. to make fairy tales for people. Exactly. Exactly. Well, I mean, it is what it is. We'll see down the road um, which strategy um, holds to be, you know, the right one, so to speak, when we're talking about longevity in this in, in this area. Let's go into IGF deaths as fake. So I am going to prove this once and for all. I have a bunch of IGF deaths, and I'm going to get an IGF one level pulled to see if I move my numbers at all. Wasn't it LR3? I have deaths and LR3. Sure. I mean, you can can utilize both. Um, I mean, listen. If we go by, because I've done growth hormone in various doses, um, growth hormone is growth hormone has a short half life. The the metabolite, um, the byproduct of growth hormone IGF one that's you know um, being made in the liver um, through through conversion, um, that stays you know for a while for a few days, um, assuming you just do a bolus dose you know one shot, it, it's gonna stay longer than growth hormone. And when you see the side effects, you know, that linger even, you know, a few days afterwards, like the edema. Um, no the, hands, the, tingly the, hands. 
those kind of things. Like if, if somebody was shooting straight at IGF-1, um, which is, you know, everybody's using them, like they would be having crazy side effects. Like when my IGF-1 was above uh, 400, like that led me to have these bracelets. I think that's how they're called, bracelets. Um, um, braces, American. yeah. Bra- braces. Yeah. So like my jawline actually fucking grew. And this didn't happen in like three to five years. It happened within like months. So like if people were legitimately shooting straight IGF-1, we'd see people that are resembling acromegaly like symptoms and they would look like acromegaly patients because they see they, they see um, drastic changes very fast uh, as the IGF-1 levels uh, shoot up. So... You know, I, I tried a few brands of, you know, IGF-1, LR3, and this. Never, you know, had come... Up I noticed and- crazy fullness. Like, even when yeah. I wasn't, like... I- what do you think that's from? So, I've noticed crazy fullness for from GRPs, from uh, ipomorelin. Yeah, just from- like a secretagogue okay. snuck in there. Yeah, I think it's a secretagogue. Um, and that's how, you know, you get that, you know, fullness. Um, I mean, you get it from MK as well, but like, if it's, if it's straight IGF one, like, you, like, bro, your feet would not be able to even, you know, go into your shoes. Um, you would feel like extreme, you know, problems with your blood sugar. Um, if it's straight IGF one, you would have, you'd go hypoglycemic, um, cause glucagon would not be able to be secreted, um, so you'd be you'd be having problems like it's not it's like people have been shooting I, I've seen uh, in some of Boston Lloyd's vlogs he was doing like uh, bottles a day like if that's not the case like it's 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 clearly fake and I'm just wondering how this lie has been uh, dragged on for so long like this is nothing new this is we're talking since t- 2016 i assume or 2015 even before that yeah igf deaths and igf lr3 has been very popular ever since i got yeah. into biohacking same same i remember i remember as well so like i don't see I don't for know. me with deaths i notice an extreme pump extreme fullness and then right. it dissipates by the like not even like halfway through the workout, it dissipates. And then I right. would take another shot. What do you like? Is that a fast acting secretagogue? Like, I mean, we can speculate uh, yeah. without a course, we, we wouldn't know. But I mean, I'm just sure it's that definitely it's... not comparable to real Incrilex. If I can get my hands on a real Incrilex, which is real IGF one, I would love to document that on YouTube. Yeah, I think they had it in Greece like years ago. Um, and they had it in like other countries, but like just randomly. It's so expensive though. Like, and also this is another argument. So for instance, uh, growth hormone pharmaceutical versus generic, uh, like sure, generic is cheaper significantly, but like you have in Colombia, for example, Pfizer um, growth hormone 36 I use that are like $90. So it's not that big of a difference between generics and pharmaceutical grade, you know, if you know where to look for. But with Incrilex, the price is like fixed, extremely high. Like it's like more than a thousand euros per like two milligram bottle or something like that. And there's no like cutting point. There's no country where you can get it for, you know, like 50 bucks or 300 bucks. Like it's fixed at a ridiculous rate. So that tells me that the cost of manufacturing um, is very high because no, um, it's not p- patented. It's not like one company owns it and they can just do whatever the fuck they want pricing-wise because they dictate the, the supply. So it's not a matter of that. Like there's something more to it. And, you know, they, they, they carry it uh, transporting-wise, you know, special fridges. Um, you know, it's said that it's very delicate as far as, you know, if you shake it, um, you can damage the... the. That's one uh, of my videos I'm coming out is like the people who just shake their peptides up and ruin it. Right. Yeah. Right. So, so like there are a lot of arguments to be said about, you know, why I, I think um, all of the IG1 is, 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 is fake as shit out there. Um, and it's kind of obvious. Like it's not even like when you add up the things, you know, I'm like it's, it's a no-brainer. So 
I'm just wondering how this lie has been dragged out for you know years. It's not it's not something that's like from yesterday. Well, when you look at Rich Piana, he tried to put a stop to it, but it didn't really seem to really halt any peptide sales. But Rich Rich did say, like, I got the real Incrilex. If it doesn't yeah. cost a fuck ton, it's fake. And yeah, then everyone in the peptide scene who was very, you know, monetarily tied to the peptide scene. No one yeah. really proved it with an actual IGF-1 blood draw, which I am all for doing that. That's what I'm all about. So I will do that. But I would, I would, I would like buy from you know reputable companies. I'll get a um, couple brands and see if I can move the number. Yeah, because people will be saying, "Yo, you just use fake or whatever," you know. So just I'll get five different brands off my list and use them all in a row and be like, so all this is fake or is it just all fake? (laughs) It's kind of funny. You remember the studies for SARMs where they, you know, tested a a lot of brands and they, you know, concluded how many of them are fakes under those are completely fake. I'm just wondering when nobody has done that with peptides. Like I've never seen a study, you know, suggesting that, you know, research chemicals or peptides or this and that are often fake people have begged me to do that video it's just very hard in the united states to find a testing facility that wants to do it still like as time went on they only do like big companies like Mm -hmm. i don't know how that one guy who did the video got like an individual there was a guy who tested all the SARMs. i remember that video I don't know how he finessed that deal because I tried to make Russ do that to prove Narrows was real. And like they needed a ton of product to prove. Yeah, they had to burn a ton of it and he didn't want to do it because it was so much product to prove. I would assume that like somewhere they would have like an independent lab where you can send a sample. And maybe not conclude that, you know, that company is legitimate, but that they they have that product, you know. Mm -hmm. Comment oh, down like, below if you could, guys can find me a company and I'll, I'll finesse so, putting them on so blast. I, yeah, so I assume that that's like some a policy where the company that's doing the test they cannot like legally say yo these are legitimate if just if they just you know test one small sample and they do that to protect their you know themselves you know from mm-hmm. lawsuits. That. So I understand that, but like I would assume there would be somewhere independent labs you know where you can just send a sample i remember there was a guy josh something in netherlands or or somewhere in europe and he actually tested gear uh, hplc method uh, people would just send like samples of gear unlabeled and then like pay 300 bucks or something like that and they would you know get test results back um it's it's quite po- he's quite popular on the forums i think it was like um either elite fitness or anabolic minds you know some of those you know og um older forums. anabolic minds yeah yeah they still exist so um there was like he starts the dude's name starts with a j josh something josh Sinky or whatever i, I can remember remember but Supposedly, he owns a, a lab where they can just do those tests. Tony hit me back. Oh, what man. So perfect. Okay. It's us three. We need to do it. Oh, okay. Tony. Okay. There we okay. go, guys. Next podcast episode. Perfect. Yeah. It's funny because we can tell them we had, the, we had this noted as a potential outcome uh, when we were talking on the phone. Yeah. We both, Last you said it was fate, and yeah. now it's set in stone. So, guys, be sure to run up the like for the next, well, run up the like on this video so the next podcast carries even more weight. Let's wrap up with some drama for Alex. So, Milos, Milos, uh, how do you say his last name? Sharchev. Yeah, you can say it with that Macedonian accent, so I don't fuck that up, but... Anyways, Milos has trained who? Super famous guru. Yeah, Logan Franklin. He's like he trains Regan Grimes. Regan Grimes, yeah. Uh, he he trains, you know, you know, relatively famous now people. 
in the industry. So and, what uh, does the all famous Milos have to beef with a little nobody? Not for long. Alec, huh? What, what, what's going on there? It's weird, though. Like, I respect everybody that has made, you know, a career out of this. Um, he, he, he looks amazing and he's from Serbia. So like, you know, it's a shithole in the Balkans, like Macedonia. So I really respect that. Like he, you know, immigrated to America and, you know, did a lot for him, for himself, um, you know, through bodybuilding, but like, it was funny because, um, I tend to comment on, you know, people when, when pros often, you know, say bullshit on social media where I see something that's like, it's, it's, it's really, you know, stronger than me. I just have to either troll them or just confront them on some bullshit. There was a, a picture side by side where there were two shows within like, I think a week apart. It was the Olympia and I think an Arnold or whatever. And then he said that uh, like it was before and after. And then he said um, before weight, like whatever. And then 20, 25 pounds heavier within a week and with better conditioning. And then my insulin loading protocol, this and that is like the, the reason why this happened, you know, blah, blah, blah. And like, first of all, just gauging um, on those pictures, I just said, uh, you know, you didn't gain, you know, 20 whatever pounds of muscle in a week. Like that's just not happening. Or even you cannot even store that much, that much uh, intracellular glycogen. Um, so, and evidently the conditioning was uh, worse. It was not better. You know, you know, a lot of times where competitors do shows and then binge and then the next day in the gym, they look like, oh, now I'm ready. You know, I didn't carve up enough. Mm. When you look at the details like glutes, uh, serrators, things like that, you know, those are not the same as when you're dry. So, uh, you know, they're, they're either, they're just fooling themselves. And then I just said that. Uh, and he got so mad, like he said, um, oh, somebody that's named God of Hormones, like you, you cannot say that, you know, talk shit to me, you're arrogant, this and that. And, you know, just using. Yeah, um, like you're so arrogant with factual evidence. Yeah. 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 So, I mean, I was like wondering, like, Jesus, why are you mad? Like, it's not that serious. It's not a personal retort. It's just my, you know, um, my opinion on things. Uh, but but it's really you know funny when I see somebody really legitimately getting offended and mad over over just you know uh, an observation. So it's weird with older generation people you cannot really um, go into an argument like they they always pull the card of uh, I'm older than you I've done more than you fuck you don't know shit um, which is kind of absurd and it's weird to especially when our generation is the information age meaning we had access to all information at a rapid rate where they had to learn it over a much slower period of time not only that let's just look into the uh, a protocol like when when would you, you utilize insulin like for example um, insulin in a bulking situation where you're either fighting off insulin resistance or you're pairing with it with growth hormone or using Lantus because it's it's out of all the insulins, yeah, it binds more so to IGF-1. So it, it does have the benefits in a bulking context. But if you're dieting and if you're loading for a show, uh, like if you're shredded and you just give yourself two or three days, whatever, to fill out, you, utilizing more insulin, it's not going to store extra glycogen if you're already saturated. You know, even in medicine, insulin is utilized in, in situations where there's like either hyperkalemia or dehydration and you need like IV fluids with insulin in order to cause rapid uh, rehydration to increase the balance, the osmotic balance in the, in the bloodstream. Like I get that, but, you know, people are just shooting like crazy doses of insulin uh, and swear that they're just feeling everything, feeling out their muscles, this and that. I'm like, if you have a function, functional uh, pancreas, that's like it's doing its job, you know, just shooting more, just feeding the insulin via going potentially hypoglycemic and therefore you need more carbs. So you're, so you're essentially forcing yourself to eat more um, uh, carbohydrates. So I don't, I don't, I don't understand the whole, um, the whole thing with insulin, you know, and, and people are, are like, again, it's a cult. Um, it's like, they- it's like a fluffiness though. It just goes away after you stop the abuse of insulin. Like if you're not using it strategically and you're using it like how they're using it, it's just kind of like right. a fake fluff. Yeah, uh, growth hormone does that as well. 
Um, if you're like, it works only if you're super shredded. I'll send you a picture, um, not a picture, a video. You can, you know, uh, attach it to, yeah. to this segment where I actually utilize growth hormone and insulin for, and, and I look like super jacked out of my mind and vascular and all that, just being on SARMs. Um, and that works only if you're super shredded because, you know, you notice your gut kind of blow out a, a bit and your face does get puffier. But if you're super shredded, that's not, not noticeable, you know, but you have to be super shredded in order to pull it off. Um, it gives you a rounder bubbly look. But if you're not shredded, then it's just going to look very off on stage uh, in, in gym lighting and, you know, uh, with a pump. Do you think that's like where most of these super heavyweight yeah. IFBB pros yeah. downfalls are, yeah. are being fed that falsified information about it? Yeah. And also they're, they're, they're going over the, the um, with the notion of I'm losing fullness. Therefore I need to refit throughout full prep at a, like they have cheat meals, like, you know, like, 10,000 calorie cheat meals, this and that, donuts, burgers, whatever. Like, bro, you're not losing muscle mass if you're on grams of steroids. Like, it's not going to happen. They just under underestimate how much uh, they the overestimate. The tissue they actually have. How much they tissue they have. And they were like, oh, shit, you know, I lost all my muscles because, you know, I, you know, I did a lot more bike. Like, I did 20 minutes of bike more so than I should have. And therefore, my legs shrunk which is a fucking bullshit. Like if you look at cyclists, like their legs are jacked out of their mind while their upper body and everything else is actually uh, atrophied. So like, if you want to shrink something, you, you don't stimulate it. You, you, you just atrophied by not, um, you know, doing uh, exercise. logic. So yeah, that's logic, but somehow <laughs> that logic thrown out of the window. If we're discussing bodybuilding, like in bodybuilding, you see these uh, uh, theories that are like, like put on a pedestal to, to to a level of being factual almost, and they're absolutely bullshit, and and, and that's scary. Like, uh, how is nobody? And then if you poke the bear, the army comes after you. Yeah. So yeah, even yeah. though you're giving them, you're like logifying them. Like, yeah. There's so many cult members that good luck breaking that up. Yeah, exactly. And I mean, I don't, I don't care about that. You know, people can believe whatever they want. It's kind of bad when, when they get mad at things, you know, when they start going into like back and forth, personal retorts and arguments and, 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 and cursing and reporting IG profiles, like my profile that I got removed um, for a while. Um, we got it back. Yeah, we got it back. But, you know, like it just tells you how people are, are really out of their mind. You know, I, well, it's like, as you'll see, when you get and like your following is obviously going to go off as this goes on, you'll see that like they can take shots at you, but you can't take shots at them or they'll get you deleted. So you just got to stand there and take it. I mean, it's not even taking shots, though. Like I don't when I take shots, uh, it's never personal. It's more so, you know, just questioning something that's really absurd and just giving my alternative viewpoints on it. Uh, it's never, you know, fuck you. Oh, I'm not shit. saying it's malicious. I'm saying even if it's out of good heart, you know, yeah. it's always a risk. Like this, I, I didn't know whether it's the video I made with you or the co the comment on, on, on IG and uh, do aesthetics uh, post. So one or the other was the reason why I got uh, taken down. Um, you know, there was a video of him, you know, he was like shaking like crazy with a five pound dumbbell, uh, kettlebell doing like static holes, holes basically with the shirt off. And I said, bro, like this has zero uh, practical uh, applicable use. And it looks like you're having an exorcism. Uh, exorcism. Um, and <laughs> I had, I had like war in the common zone, like, bro, you don't know shit. Like he's leaner than you. Oh, there, there it is. He's leaner than you, Alec. I get that but a lot. And that I'm like, Jesus Christ. Like, first of all, it's funny. Second of all, I'm right. So, like, it's not even a, a personal shot, you know. I don't Third know. Third of all, are... Joe Aesthetics is just like he's a visual. That's what he does for clout. Yeah. Like, he's a visual character. It's not like he's trying to be yeah. super serious and you were just pointing out the obvious. Yeah, I don't like. I, I don't think he he's the one that reported. Like, he doesn't give a shit, you know. But but the 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 audience though, Jesus, the, the toxicity. Like, that's why they don't want to get involved into. 
uh, the whole bodybuilding industry. But hey, it is what it is. Hey, I, you know, I, I we're, get a we're lot. We're restoring the industry to how it should be. Yeah, yeah, we'll see. We'll see. It's it's a long way to go. Um, so yeah, Milo's blocked you and Brandon blocked you. What's going on here, Alec? You're getting blocked by everyone. Yeah, bro. Nobody likes me. I don't know why. Um, she she she, uh, she posted a, a picture next to Bumstead saying, I'm coming for him. I'm like, bro, just turn pro first, then shit on Bumstead. Logan actually also blocked me over that as well. You know, he started beefing with Jeremy when he was a physique guy and didn't do shit. And I'm like, I mean, and people would uh, like say naturally, well, you don't compete. Let, let's see you do this and that. I'm like, I know, like, relax. It's not about me. You know, it's, uh, you know, just objectively, you know, I wonder when people are like, it's fine to be uh, confident and to do things with passion. But, you know, when you, you know, milk it to a bigger extent where you're just, you know, obnoxious with it. I mean, come on. Come on, just you know, be real. Put put the work in. You know, yeah, I'll your- throw some shade at you, Alec. You know, the younger sure. Alec when I first met you, before you had your ego death and went through your near death experience, would probably yeah. have taken a different angle. But you're yeah, a grown ass should- man now that's eating some shit, and you see the yeah. world through a different lens now. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I think that's that's it. Just comes with with uh, with territory with with life, you know. Um, back then, I was like really fucked up as far as like I was like super low body fat. I was abusing stimulants, um, you know, like all that shit gets to your mind. And you know, when you think that you're the shit and you know everything and you know you control everything, and when something happens where you cannot control it, then you get a you know big fuck you in the face, and it's very hard to you know. Um, actually swallow that and accept mm. it that's what uh, being an adult means um which i recently found out you know i'm, I'm super anal about things that you know i i want to hack my my, my way around things and make them work as a as a you know th- as a thought in my mind that you know they should be and if, if something's out of my control you know i would just lose my mind you know i would actually lose sleep over things um and a lot of it is just false expectations, uh, unrealistic expectations that are shoved down to our throat through social media. You know, everybody is a winner. You know, everybody is jacked as fuck. Everybody exactly. Is, you know, everybody likes, you know, has, you know, all the girls in the world, this and that. And in reality, nobody really does shit. They're like, all of them are faking shit. They're, you know, driving uh, rented cars or morphing you know. their personality into what they think will attract the most people yeah and yeah. like causing personality disorders and all that but that gets rewarded that's the problem that, that is getting the rewarded and therefore people are looking up to that because they're like okay I, I want that shit even though it's fake they don't know um and it's getting rewarded through clicks through engagement and all that um and just throws people into depression, you know, even these three, four days without, without Instagram, you know, even though I'm fully aware of, you know, the whole situation, I'm like, holy shit, you know, it's so, it's so fucking, you know, um, it's great to just be focused on the moment, not checking the phone. Um, Dude, you know, when I mine got deleted, I was exactly like you. I was like, so low key happy, even though I right. spent five years building that profile. It's so nice to not have that anxiety of that stimulation. Exactly. It's, 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 it's insane. Um, you know, but you know, that's why when I got it back, I'm like, might as well, you know, utilize this shit to, to fulfill, you know, another, um, another void and another legitimate cause basically um in order to make something out of it otherwise it's just negative so mm-hmm. uh, that you know viewpoint on this uh, we'll see how it goes like i uh, ever since you made the the first video and even the, the the videos that we were discussing like with growth from one's arms whatever like years ago like people um started you know engaging with me asking me questions i post q a's on my instagram um like probably weekly um, and I get so many questions and when I help people, you know, they're like, like they're, they're legitimately happy and grateful. Uh, and that's like a, a dopamine high. That's not, I cannot relate to real life, like buying material things or that's like doing exactly f- how I am. You know, it so makes I- my day when someone writes me like a giant paragraph on how something realigned their life that they learned from me, or they saw yep. me struggling and related 
to my, yeah. you know, weakness put out there and that they could relate, you know. I agree, I agree with you. Me and you could buy a lot of material bullshit, but yeah. that it's just like once you have that material item, you're like, where's the no. next biggest thing? Where's the next no. biggest thing? It, it's just like never it never ends with that shit. It Whereas never like ends. fulfilling someone else's thing that resonates much more. Exactly. And, and, and as you're helping somebody, you know, it's always a different case. So now we're, we're facing problem solving, uh, which also boosts your own ego because you've done something that's correct, that, you know, validates your knowledge. So, you know, it's, it's, it's a constant boost in, in, in dopamine. Whereas if you just buy a car, you'd be like happy with it. But then it's the same car every right. day. It's not new. You know, it's the... Um, is chasing uh, and walking the path uh, that's actually the yeah way. like i i just use the cars as like a bullshit trophy right. to push right. higher that's not right. no gratification i know you're not taking shots at me i'm just saying for the audience oh. like when you look no. at a rich person who gets those watches or it's just it's just a milestone to hit when they get that yeah. item they don't they don't give a shit about it really right yeah i don't i, don't, I mean I, I i'm fine with it you know um, it's, it's also a status symbol, you know, um, that's fine completely, you know, you know, it's kind of more, it's a problem when you don't even, you can't even afford things and you just do it, do it for the sake of being acknowledged. And when something's tied in with your identity, you know, that's when, you know, you're nothing more than, you know, a, a lie, right. um, or than being fake. So, um, that's, that's where the, the issue arises. Uh, but, you know, something interesting, um, you know, I, I've, I've just thought up. Um, this cycle tends to repeat itself throughout history where, so, like, even if you go back to before the Renaissance uh, and the human, humanitarian period, um, like, people were more, um, more patriotical views were, you know, um, seen. Um, people were more conservative. Uh, then, you know, there was fear, you know, of God and respect, you know, the church had a lot of power and all that. And then, you know, people got sick of that shit. And then once the medieval times came um, and the, the Renaissance, like you can see the drastic shifts in, in sculpting, in art, in architecture, in, in paintings, you know, like naked women, men, you know, liberty. Um, they were doing orgies, they were doing, you know, fucked up shit, they were like, like pro-libertarian. And then what happens is later on... Society broke down. Yeah, and then, this, like, if, when that was old, then you have a shift, industrial revolution, um, you know, wars, there's, again, you know, more, um, you know, more conservative views again, more, again, God came into the to the equation you know uh, church had again more power um, you know ev everything was more um, moral and rule based uh, wars and and things like that also you know stirred the pot and now we're going back to the same cycle where now it's pro liberty um, you know instagram is basically the first page of 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 you know something that was considered porn like 15 years ago it's now your news feed on instagram um and it's just gonna it's getting worse and you're like uh, socially ranked like people in public yeah. know about my instagram and they treat me like a completely different person than yeah. as a normal person yeah and this will like even if you look at just the political aspect of it like people are you know we see the whole gender confusion things with you know extreme pro-libertarian views and you know nothing extreme being extremely conservative or uh libertarian as you know it's it's bad on both ends of the spectrum and now we're again shifting towards that direction uh we see you know ridiculous things um and i, I just wonder how this will end because it, it will end like the cycle will again go back to you know uh, the other direction um but you know it's kind of it's kind of you know whack to see you know in the past five years the degree and the, the amount of change that has happened and I really wonder how it will, you know, cap and then how it, what would I be the think third? my, my prediction is it will be different than the past because of technology and the way that their group think programming people like at I least in the States, when you go all the way through college, that is programming you to believe in a certain political party. 
aka the Democrats. Right. right. Yeah, I do agree with it. But but you know, so far, um, it was uh, all the I believe so every time through, through history when we were at this point, uh, it looked grim. And you know, people, you know, you would assume that you know it's just gonna get worse and worse. But I still think, as with anything, even in our bodies, uh, the checks and balances will do their thing. Um, because nothing can just go in one direction without having um, you know, checks. So no another um hormonal system. What is your uh, opinion on like when you look at the health of a society, you can always see and just FYI, I don't hate no one. I don't spend time being prejudiced against people. This right. is just an analytical, historical yeah. view. Just saying right. that for the audience. Like when you look at the health of a society, yeah, a society, I can't talk. Health of a society, right? You see the end of it is when gender confusion starts to mix. That's where you see it really start to spiral and break down. That's kind of what we're witnessing right now. Not only that, though, it's the attack on the family as a a a family unit. You know, like if you look like it's not that wild over here. Uh, Europe, you know, for the sake for argument's sake is is more um, conservative and, 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 you know, still it's it's not as wild as the US. The US is really like on a different level. Um, but it spreads like a disease. Um, so, you know, it's, 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 re- it's very absurd. So we'll see. But over time, you know, the bad things spill over everywhere. Whereas the good things, you know, even though they're, you know, there are not many good things, but they're very slow. Like the bad shit is easy to just, you know, spill down throughout the whole world. And people accept it with full heart because it's the new thing, you know, mm. and it acknowledges them as well. It gives them a voice and, you know, okay, I'm part of this shit. So again, it's an identity problem. You know, that's why you, people are not um, free thinkers. You know, uh, they rather, you know, just join groups and, you know. What's your opinion, opinion on like transgender athletes or like if you had a son who at age 15 said, you know, like, dad you know alec i want to be a girl like how would you approach those arguments because in the united states you will be like that group black pill tinfoil hat on is very heavily protected by the powers above for certain reasons right i mean you can assume um, my thoughts on it i mean any rational human being would would be against that, obviously, because it goes against, you know, the existence of our civilization, basically. Um, men are men, women are women, and it has to stay like that. Like, for example, like the, the you know, gay uh, population, for example, I don't, I mean, I find that like normal because even in, with animals, um, there, there's, you know, um, that, that, um, that occurrence, like it has a dominance hierarchy. Yeah, but when you're talking pharmacological intervention that right. wouldn't be available, uh, you know, it's available right now through technological advancement. So that's not normal because you're dependent on exogenous um, hormone intervention, hormonal and surgical intervention. So it's not normal. So why would why are our bodybuilders, you know, getting rated for trend and test? Um, whereas like people like this can just, you know, buy cipronate, cipronate acetate and spironolactone and, you know, and, and, and estradiol and just, you know, change their gender, no question asked. And let's not even go into the, you know, bone structure and, and everything that right. <laughs> as you're developing uh, through puberty, your brain, um, your nervous system, like those things cannot be undone. Uh, you can cause, you know, uh, a minuscule differences. And even if they're significant, the advantages would still be forever there. You know, you, you're not altering your genetic code. Um, you're just intervening uh, in your, you know, current uh, state by, you know, hormonal signaling. And, you know, that's that's fine as long as you're not beating the shit out of somebody that doesn't have that advantage, Um like you know, so sports, things like that, 
you know, it's fucked up. And again, going back to the attack of the family unit, that's one way because, you know, you're just, you know. A unit one form. Sorry? A unit, a family unit one form. Yeah, that just goes to shit. Like even reproduction, how would that happen? You know, it's, 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 it's fucked up. But again, uh, side sidetracking from this shit back to the uh, industry to bodybuilding um I, I i'm opening the notes um maybe we was uh so I've been in documentaries movies. where the anabolic doc has been the opposing argument where i'm more like pro-choice pro-medical freedom well i don't want to i don't know the anabolic doc's actual true angle obviously he's going to hold up western medicine and in my opinion, I like the anabolic dog. I think he's one of the only. Yeah, there's like three endocrinologists on YouTube that actually say it remotely how it is, put themselves out there with their medical license. And, you know, I respect right. that. And he's helping people to a certain degree. It's just like I, I told Alec on the phone that like he's made contradictory statements on SARMs before and I have them saved on my desktop over there. And I thought about making a video, you know, this yes. was before I called people out on YouTube or did cloud videos, but maybe I will bring this video up. But like, you know, in the video against like the documentary, he's like super anti SARMs. Then I right. watched the video he made where he's like, these look really promising, like the evolution in certain yes. aspects. And it's just like the minute you do statements like that, you're so contradictory. You're playing both sides and it just makes me look at you at a different angle. And it's fine to change your opinion. Just state it, you know, like, sorry, guys, I was, you know, I view things like this, but based on what I've researched uh, and seen up until now, I've changed my mind and that's fine. Uh, but you cannot just randomly change drastically 180 your opinions on things. And just act like you've never uh, seen things differently or even and even be, you know. And me and Alec are viewing it through the lens of like the actual data around SARMs, if they're used in an yeah. efficacious way. We're not talking about, you know, the people abusing SARMs and coming to them with fucked up livers after taking SARMs for a year straight. We're talking I mean, about the actual data around it. Right. But also compare them with steroid use, like the heart, the, the risk reward ratio is just again it's they're safer they're not as efficacious efficacious but like as far as you know side effects go um i mean they're not even close as bad as, as steroids so i don't know how a doctor would shit on something that's safer in regards to um side effects you know you don't see polycythemia you don't see um calcium scores being elevated on SARMs. um you don't see hypertension like hypertensive crisis um ventricular uh, arrhythmias um you don't see things that are very like signature like for um other androgens for steroids so uh, it's it's kind of like an oxymoron you know I, I just don't understand it um you would assume that somebody like i do get the argument that they're not regulated or they're there's not like um they're Extreme not long-term data yeah again but if you look at a, a pathway of how something works you can well, that's make the angle a, i see it but that's that's what they say no, make an educated guess so if you if you have like have a new anti-inflammatory medication and you, and inhibits you know prostaglandin release like uh, cox2 uh one uh, then like you would assume that it's gonna have the same side effect profile as you know other medicines in that um in that group so yeah there can be differences different binding affinity different um, different receptor uh, sites that are targeted, like with like with S four, uh, uh, and targeting them one receptors in the eyes. But again, looking at the whole picture as a whole, um, it's really ignorant to just say, "Oh, they're bad." You know, they're like just stay away from them. They're they're garbage. This and that. It just you know, it's kind of um, it's not responsible. You know, and also it's kind of funny where. People over dramatize things um, and take their as their own. For example, a doctor saying, uh, "You know, we've seen in the research and this and that," and you're in your mind here thinking that these guys, you know, yeah, the anabolic lab. doc almost takes the angle like he was like on the forefront of everything yeah. he presents when yeah. he's just like us looking up 
the studies and interpreting them. Yeah, that that that's there. Like even in uh, uh, like doctors, they have like those studies are in either in books, which right now I doubt it. So it's still online research. So like that's how they get their knowledge. So it's not you cannot say we were not conducting the research. It's not like you're, um, you know, uh, you're not doing like a PhD where you're just you know based on your thesis you're conducting experiments and you know that's not the case but you know it sounds more you know powerful and more um more uh persuasive when people say it like that so uh you know it's it's a marketing gimmick but like again why would you you know kind of skim away from being as legitimate as possible by trying to you know uh spice things up where it's just not needed like people know like just relax to say the facts and, you know, everything will, will, will you know, fall into place. Um, I mean, it's not that big of a deal, obviously, but again, it's just something that um, comes to mind when I see things like that. Um, and again, all of these things are a big reason why I just wanted to stay the fuck away from all of this. Um, you know, I'm more of a, like, uh, like explosive in nature. And I just want to, you know, I would debate people over this and that, you know, and when you're I see, blunt. Um, this is blunt yeah. biohacking. You're just blunt. You're straight to the point. No sugar coating. Like I like the anabolic doc guys. I follow him. He doesn't follow me back. He never followed me back. He probably fucking hates me. But at the end of the day, when I see that contradictory back and forth of his opinion and him presenting the information as if like, like for me, if I had a PhD and I presented something, I'd have to credit all the other doctors that right. gave me that i don't see yeah. that going on it seems like just like any other youtuber who just but, i found this yeah but also when you're conducting research whether it is for um a scientific thesis or your um you know working on your phd or master's degree whatever you always have to reference you know where you you know got the literature from if it's your independent research and you know you have to go into in depth with that you know, if you're taking that angle, you know, otherwise you're just, you know, stroking your ego and your dick um, over something that's not really related directly to you. Um, but I do get it, the, you know, authority um, card that they play uh, in whatever, like we're just discussing different mm -hmm. things, taking practical uh, examples, you know, this is nothing. I just uh, think with the anabolic for, doc, like when you step okay. into the realm of bodybuilding, like, is there really medical data you can go off of, of stacking multiple androgens on top? And like, it becomes more like, okay, who's actually done this shit? What have you experienced? The collection of a multitude of people who have done this shit versus like referencing actual data. Cause it's not really, you know, applicable exactly. except for the basic level. Yeah, exactly. You don't have data on on uh, like like even obviously on, it's doing damage we all know that right. we're not stupid right right exactly i mean still it's kind of the, the I, I touched uh, about this on uh, in our previous video um people that are doing this are you know more likely to be you know to haven't read a fucking book in their life and uh they're not like knowledge based genetics are predominantly uh, the reason why people are successful uh, in this sport because it's you know uh, above everything genetic based so a lot of people don't even need to you know bother themselves until something happens and they're forced to you know get into the whole research or or try to help themselves but some a lot of times is when that happens it's too late so um you know just go ahead and ask boston lloyd what he thinks you know about yeah what's your uh, thoughts on that let's go into that so for people who don't know boston lloyd what peptide was that specifically i, I really don't remember it was like it was memory. it was like um you could basically spot reduce fat on where you injected yeah. it and i remember reading into the data on it and like all the rats had kidney failure from it so i was like oh definitely acute, never fucking acute, with that yeah acute kidney injury was like 100 percent side effect from the drug so the dude like takes a whole bottle of it and i'm the day. biggest fan of boston i've talked to boston and i totally respect boston i just oh, don't this understand to, this yeah this has to be taken as an anecdote just to prove 
um, a point just just for that. You know, so you're doing you're reading, um, assuming like one would read what they're you know gonna be utilizing. So you read that all the Reds have have had like acute kidney injury, and then you decide to take a whole bottle of it and shoot yeah, it. Yeah, not even do the correct dosage. Yeah, and just directly shoot it at the kidney area, like lower back. And I'm like, at first, I just thought it's a, it's, it's a joke. But then as, you know, things unfolded, um, you know, at first I didn't take him seriously. But uh, over time, it was like, holy shit, that this is like the pinnacle of stupidity. Um, so it's, it's, it's kind of fucked up. And, you know, I, I do feel for him. But on the other hand, you know, because I watched Leo's uh, podcast and, um, and Derek and, you know, um, and Steve. Um, you know, I see, you know, I heard, hear things that are a statement that are like, uh, I can't wait to get on dialysis and blast trend or, you know, like that dude will be uh, waiting for a kidney transplant uh, and it, he will get it before maybe your sister or your mother or, you know, my mother, or whatever, well, I'm in, the, in Macedonia, but whatever, anybody in the US. So, and their goal is not to change their way of life, their approach to the things. No, no, no. Just continue with the with the same thing that ruined you. So, you know, it's kind of really absurd, but you see the same pattern with other people. It's not like a personal retort on, uh, on this guy. Uh, it just gives you a picture of how things, how people view things. And again, it goes back to the identity um, uh, clenching. So you have to be the biggest dude. You have to be, you know, this guy. Otherwise, you're not yeah. that, that dude. You know, I don't think he, Boston has anything to prove. Like, I don't no, think that would that, impact his coaching at all, in my opinion. No, no. you know, if anything, and like he has a child, he's a child, right. a wife, and I don't know. There's right. more to life than blasting yeah, trend it, on dialysis. Yeah, leave him out of some. Uh, it doesn't even matter, you know. Just one anecdote, but like so I saw it with because I also watch what was podcast. Like up until recently, he was way jacked out of his mind, especially when he had also kidney, um, he was in kidney failure. So like, if you're retired, then why keep it up? Like the same thing with Ronnie Coleman that's happening right now. You know, I think it's just a part of uh, tying yourself to your identity that's, that's nobody expecting you to maintain apart from ourselves. Like I've been in this trap myself. It's not that I'm talking shit about people like this. I'm just taking anecdotes that we know of, right. uh, proving the point. So, and we see this in the bodybuilding uh, community a lot because it's very like everybody here has, you know, insecurities. Like you don't go to 300 pounds just because you're happy with your with yourself, and you know, like there's always some underlying uh, insecurity or. Or something along those lines. It's never, you know, just for the for the. Pure I just think intent. it's straight up dysmorphia. Like the minute you go in the gym is the last day you ever like. You're forever small after that, no matter what. Oh, I I, th- I thought of another example, practical, uh, from a dude here. He's he's the cardiologist that I, um, I mentioned to you. Um, the guy was slamming trend. A um, cardiologist and- slamming trend. It doesn't get any <laughs> more crazy than that. Yeah, and he had like cardiovascular remodeling for for the worse, obviously. So his heart parameters were changed, and I discussed things with him. His therapy, like he got on the bivalol uh, ten milligrams per day, and he got off the drugs, and then like eight to ten months later, like he significantly shrunk his heart, um, which is amazing, obviously. And um, um, it it gives you know um, a shot of light to people that you know are beginning to have side effects from steroid use. So what happens is um, after I got my MRI, you know, I hit him up and I'm saying, yo, I want to do another AKG, an echocardiogram, and, you know, uh, see how this uh, fluid with the monoxidil is going, whether I need additional therapy or not. And he says, uh, okay, sure, come. And I was supposed to see him a few days ago. And then he goes to me, like he just disappears. And, you know, I'm calling him, you know, calling him day by day by day, and, you know, no answer. And I was like, what the fuck is going on? And then this morning, uh, my dad calls him. And he's like, because um, I was so disappointed. And he and he, the dude picks up. So, he like, he was deliberately avoiding me. Um, 
And then like he scheduled the appointment for tomorrow. And I talked, uh, I, I, I talked with him like, what the fuck? Where, where were you? And he says to me, I got on trend and I got severe depression and anxiety. And that's why I shut myself off. So I'm like, dude, like I'm trying to reach you out, reach out to you for. And you're probably you like know, one of the only people who would understand what he was going through. No, I, I do. But like if, if you're a doctor or a cardiologist and you're experiencing if a drug fucks your heart up and you manage to fix it, why the fuck are you taking it again? And if it's like impacting your work, your social life and your professional life, because you've, you've given like a, a hypocritic oath, right? And you're straying away from it just for the sake of taking a fucking drug. What are you doing? Like, that's not a rational behavior. Like, you know, the, it's, it's, it's a shame. It's the you. super physiological ego that trend gives dudes who have no ego on their own. Right. I get it. But like, why would you go back to something that really fucked with your heart? And that's in your field of expertise, like your yeah. medical. <laughs> or like, that's the, the irony of it. You know, it's not, it's not you or me or some dude down the street, you know, doing this. It's a fucking MD. Full blown cardiologist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know that's 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 the the, the, the the irony. And I was like, Jesus Christ! You know that's so. We'll see. I, I hope that he that I find him tomorrow. <laughs> Just I don't know. I'll flip out. But yeah, that's funny. But again, it's the same thing that we talked about prior. It's everywhere. It's even here. It's not that it, it's exclusive for the U.S. or for people that we know of um, publicly um, it's everywhere, you know, and that is the sport. So um, it's, it's, it's so weird, but um, See, it is like when it is. my career is over, I don't think I'm really going to have an issue downsizing because I'm known for my personality and knowledge. Like, right. I Why spend like, this is like vanity. This is like to prove a point. And then once my point's proven, that's it. Exactly. It's not even that though. Like it just fell in your life. Cause like right now, this body weight. Every day, I'm wondering how 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 are these people that are like five eleven, five ten, five nine, five eight? How are they? How are they like three hundred pounds? Like, you know, when you when you when you see it and when you stand up, uh, you know, rapidly, you get orth orthostatic hypotension. You have problems with circulations. You have, you know, um, problems with um, pro proper hydration, maintaining you know, osmolarity and, 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 and everything in the body. Um, there are so many things uh, like blood pressure, heart rate, everything that just come with the territory of just being big. Uh, and I'm not even big, like relative to society. I am, but like in a bodybuilding context, mm -hmm. I'm, you know, how are they, you know, managing this? And again, I would, you know, go back to, you know, mind the videos of Jay Cutler, Ronnie Coleman, when they have like, like this much uh, uh, pills every morning. And when you think about it, like a lot of those pills, they're not taurine, they're not L-carnitine, they're like blood pressure medication, they're beta blockers, they're, um, they're you know, whatever statins, statins for their cholesterol, uh, calcium blockers, like so many things that just go with it just for you to be that size. So, I mean, and Tony I was, said it best, in my opinion. Tony was right on this. And he's like, the best bodybuilders are the ones who can comfortably exist at that size. Because I feel like a normal person has no idea what it's like. I to think sit that's at that size. I think that's worse, though. I think, I think having side effects is a blessing in disguise because there's no way your body's comfortable. It's like, tolerance it's like pain tolerance it's side effect tolerance the problems still happen you just don't feel them so i wouldn't necessarily find that as a blessing uh, i'd rather have my body uh, notify me earlier rather than later um you know some I, i've had a guy that i've helped with he was in kidney failure and his gfr was like 14 um and he had no side effects apart from like decreased appetite and i'm like you know how did you let it you know, get to this point. And he said, bro, like I never felt anything. It was like, like a random checkup that I, I happened to do it. And, and I saw it. Right. And I was like, holy shit. And then it turned out that it's, it's a, you know, some autoimmune disorder, whatever uh, he got it fixed. But you know, that's scary. Like walking around with in kidney failure 
And those are a silent killer for the audience. You don't really notice until the kidneys are functioning at like 10%. Yeah, that's bad though. I mean, some people like when I had some problems in that regard, because I had an autoimmune issue, um, my GFR was like 40, uh, not 44, 64. And I started having like side effects in regards to like zero energy, um, pitting edema, uh, problems with uh, blood pressure, um, and I wasn't even taking anything at that time. Um, and I got it fixed with uh, DMR and, 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 and cortisol um, shots. So uh, with prednisone. So in that regard, you know, I'm blessed that like I, I my body warns me about things. So I stopped even drinking coffee, you no know, stimulants because I started reading up because um, like back in the day, I could use stimulants when I was like super light. Right now, like I have problems. I have like a severe anxiety whenever I like over drink coffee or take a, a harsher stimulant. And, you know, I read about uh, androgens in- increasing the adrenergic receptor expression, which is, you know, uh, bind by beta one to three and alpha one and two receptors, the receptor agonists. So all stimulants, steroids make you more sensitive to stimulants, to clan, to ephedrine, to, you know, alpha agonists, to alpha, um, uh, alpha two antagonists. You know, it depends whether how they're impacting the brain, whether pre or postsynaptically. So, regardless, um, you, you're forced to you know think about these things, you know, and not just ignore them. So, like right now, I live way healthier than um, you know some choices that I did um, back in like four years ago, five years ago. Like I was, I felt indestructible. Like I, I could like drink like twenty coffees a day. Uh, take ephedrine, go party, you know, drugs, whatever. Like I felt nothing. Whereas now, you know, I drink two cups of coffee and I, I'm like, holy shit, I get anxiety. I can hear my heart, you know, breathing gets heavier, things like that. So, you know, makes you, makes you really more uh, self-aware if you want to be, or I can just take oxys, you know, and just get, get <laughs> hot as fuck or everything, you know, and just pop Adderall's and oxys and, you know, be the shit. But that's not gonna lead anywhere. Like no, that's gonna care. lead to a very bad, climatic end. Yeah, yeah, and and you know I thought about it because whenever you know I faced um, situations where I you know had like in my mind I was like let's uh, like I should take like the Adderall or this or that you know because I have work I have podcasts I have studies for school you know you can always make an argument as to why you want to be enhanced you know we make that argument with bodybuilding so it's very easy to do the, that with you with other things uh, in life because you're uh, accustomed to taking PEDs to you know dance around and improve upon things. So why not improve your cognition, your memory, your this, your personality? And you also have like the competition aspect in the back of your mind, like someone else yeah. is doing that. Yeah, I'm against the, someone else that's doing that. Yeah, that's like going into a competition naturally, right? So why wouldn't I, you know, take something for this podcast, you know, so you're smarter, whatever, you know, but when you look at the grand scheme of things, you know, what can happen you know i had a friend that actually had a heart attack at the gym um last summer um he was like 27 or 28 uh, at that time uh like he was he was doing he had like he was doing his first cycle uh on andrel on and trt dose of test um the dude uh, you know he was partying doing drugs whatever next day morning he goes to the gym i think he went directly from the club to the gym uh felt you know uh, cold sweats you know problems breathing collapsed you know he goes to the hospital and they had put a stand in his heart so like he and he had a heart attack at like 27 28 on his first cycle so you know was there to say about you know people that are you know on their like 30th cycle right so and and also just tying with this story um, I have ten percent more battery. It should should last for a while. Um, like he also utilized Cialis, and I see it used being used in in, in bodybuilding a lot, right? People take it. Um, which Almost is like as a blood body. pressure medication constantly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's the thing. Like it's it's a vasodilator, and it 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 can cause a similar problem like the minoxidil, even though it's not. Uh, it doesn't activate the raw system nowhere close to that degree. Um, 
the problem is that it's still sympathomimetic. Like it, it still activates activates the sympathetic nervous system from uh, the baroreceptor reflex, and in, in, it can cause heart attack. Like my uncle actually, um, he died two years ago. Um, you know, from from utilizing um, that um, car just gave out. So it's a real issue, and you know, gym goers, and now it's a it's a trend. Like they pop. They dry scoop a pre workout, they pop a Cialis and yeah. you know, look at the pump, you know, not knowing that they, they can just fucking kill themselves like that. And especially if you mix it with stimulants, you know, your beta and alpha receptors are, you know, out Upper of whack. And downer at the same time, it never works good. Never. It's just a burden on the heart and you just get fucked. So I think know. if you're going to do PEDs for the audience listening, you got to pick street drugs or you got to pick PEDs don't right. fucking mix them if you're mixing them right. like you're just it, it always happens to the people who mix them yeah but that's the thing they tie tie in with with the street drugs because when you look at the persona the profile of you know some of the people that are doing this they're doing is for attention they're Vanity. for the drugs they're doing trend and things like that so they can go clubbing thing take their shirt off you know thank god is not like 2012 with the z's era but as you showed me the TikTok video prior to this podcast, you know, that's still uh, carrying over to these yeah. days. You know, you know this is shit what... is here to stay. That type of lifestyle, I think, will never go away at this point. I think so, too. I think so, too. Like, even with the dry scooping things, like, people are just ending up in the hospital over fucking nothing. They don't even have a great time. They don't get the dopaminergic drive that like street drugs give you so they just get give themselves heart attack just to film videos on tiktok which is so absurd like what kind of loser you 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 would feel like if you just gave yourself a heart attack over you know a fucking tiktok trend like like you, you you're it's a like certain- what what cl- like is that cl- like let's say you fucking did it and didn't have a heart attack what is that cloud equal <laughs> fucking nothing it's bullshit clout like yeah, different sure. clout holds different weight. Like and the clout yeah. that me and Alec have, you guys actually fuck with us. If we were just sitting here seeing how many scoops of pre-workout we could take without having a heart attack, you would just right. follow us for our idiocracy. You wouldn't give a shit. Praying we die or even betting money on it. You know, <laughs> like that payment value of it. Like, look at this loser. Like, uh, <laughs> I, but like wonder when he's, he's going to die. So, um, that's the entertainment aspect of it, I guess, which is, you know, uh, a poorer form of the, like, in the past, there were gladiators and there were, like, legitimate threats, you know, a legitimate, you know, thrilling, um, you know, uh, bets like that. Right now, you just, people are just suiciding themselves for fame. So it's the same concept. People just watch other people for the, for the shit that they do and the harm that they're causing to themselves. And, you know, it's, it's, it's weird, but um, it is what it is. Well, that was podcast episode number one. Absolute banger. Like I said, I wasn't playing around when I say that when me and Alec get on call, it's just gold constantly. I definitely think moving forward, obviously, after the episode with Tony, which will be the next episode, and me and Alec know that that one will be all over the place. I think the yeah. next episode the third episode will be more of a non pd episode so if you made it this far comment down what non pd topics you want us to go into but like i said the episode with tony who knows how that one's gonna go but yeah the That's third the one yeah and to throw down some questions for tony i'll be sure yeah. to throw up the questions for tony on my instagram as well but Sincerely appreciate everyone who's made it to this part of the podcast. What should they comment down below so we can see who made it all the way through, Alec? I mean, the other one, uh, same as last video. Yeah, I, I like that. Comment Alec Goat. Alec Goat. So not yeah. Goat Alec, Alec Goat. So if I see Goat Alec, then you're just an idiot who didn't make it to the end. Alec Goat. Yeah. All right, guys. Yeah. I'll see you guys in my next video. And Alec is here to stay. 
And like I said, we're slowly upgrading the gear as these go along. But I know that you guys are just you just got you guys want the content, so it doesn't matter. But I say it's pretty quality content. We did Skype the last time and Zoom looks way better. Zoom looks way better. Yeah. 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 Bye, guys.